I am Pat Kenny. I'm on the City Council. I do want to reiterate, contact your county board members. You would not believe the impact speaking up has. I went to a public hearing on the six week reconstruction project that started at 5.30. And we got an earful from some people, including one that came to this, about what they're thinking. It really has an impact. Um, I grew up on a farm out in, uh, near Mason. I have land under contract to the Capel. I didn't know they were going to be the ones who actually are going to operate the land. Uh, my mom has 110 acres under a contract to them too. I'm thoroughly convinced, this is my view, and from studying this issue and thinking about the ramifications of the land I have, the land that my mom has, the land that we want to keep in the family, I'm thoroughly convinced that this is the first of many if the rights have their way. This isn't one CAFO, this is the first of many. And I, I've really read and thought a lot about why are they coming here? And it took me a, quite a while to come to the conclusion, and it is this. What CAFOs need in southern Wisconsin, Iowa, and the Carolinas, what do they really need? They need land to spread their manure on. What CAFOs run out of is not corn, it's not soybeans, it's not employees, and it's usually not water either. It's land to spread the manure on. We have a lot of land up here available for spreading manure because we don't have the level of cows and, and beef that most areas have. And so they're looking at this, in my view, because they see lots of land where they can spread manure. There's a list of people that are rented to the rights. There's quite a few people. There's 11 of them right now that are scheduled to get hog manure. They didn't anticipate that when they signed their lease. I've talked to two of those people in the last few weeks. They're not at all happy with this. One of them said to me, I'm not going to build my new house here when I retire if they're going to be spreading manure here. And he's not. Um, and so they're coming here, I think, to put in as many cables as they can. It'll be one, it'll be another, it'll be the other, and it'll be to spread the manure here. I grew up in a dairy farm, I spread manure, I know where manure goes. It goes downhill, and when there's rain, it goes downhill even faster. And if you're going to spread 10 million gallons of pig manure and wastewater from that operation a year on the Fish Creek watershed, which is clay, it's not going to absorb that. Clay does not absorb anything nearly as fast as other loams. These people are from Iowa, they're trying to bring their farming practices from Iowa up here, down there, most of that water will go into the soil much faster than here. They're going to try to inject some of this. I was told they were going to inject all of it. But now in their plan, I see that they're going to surface apply and do some on the surface until they inject it. Um, that's different than what they told us. This means we're going to have big trucks hauling about 8,000 gallons or so down our roads. We're going to have roads that are damaged. But it also means that in these rural areas where they spend this manure, there's people that are going to want to move. There's already people looking to sell where the proposed CAFO is. If this CAFO comes in and the others follow, which is the pattern of CAFO expansions in a new area, a generation from now, you will not recognize northern Wisconsin. It will be completely different. It will be as different as when they cut the timber 100 years ago and clear cut it, and small farmers came in and tried to scratch all the living. We will not recognize this, and I don't think you're going to recognize the bay and what we have out there either. So I look at this as not one CAFO. This is the point of where we either keep the CAFOs out or they will come in here. And the only way to stop it 